Hi, and welcome to week two, session one. And in this session, we're going to have three different video segments uh, to keep things um, manageable. And we're going to look at validating the uh, AC to DC power supply system that we designed at the end of week one. Recall that was a 40 watt, uh, 20 volt power supply. And we had uh, about two volts of, of output ripple. It was unregulated. We used a, a step down transformer to uh, take the 120 volt AC line input in and basically bring that down to about 22, 23 volts uh, of, of, of AC signal with a full wave bridge rectifier system. And then we had a 10 um, mil millifarad uh, filtering capacitor that we calculated. And in this first video segment, what I want to do is show you how to model an ideal transformer using LT Spice. And the way we do that is we use two inductors and we couple the inductors with uh, uh, mutual inductance uh, uh, perfectly with, uh, with a value of one on that. I also want to show you the uh, Spice Directive dot P-A-R-A-M, -P param, and we can use that to help uh, 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 with our design, it allows us to change our design as we're looking at validating it and analyzing our output from our, our, our simulations. In the second video, what I'd like to do is create the diode bridge uh, because typically in the SPICE models, there, are, there aren't diode bridges built directly into SPICE, so we're going to use four. And with that, we can build a sub-circuit assembly uh, with, um, with, with a package symbol and then save that for later use. And then finally, in part three, one of the things we sometimes do in design is we use models that are, are, are computationally uh, more uh, simple but do the same exact thing. And with that, I want to use the behavioral voltage model like we had at the uh, for week one. I showed you how to use a behavioral voltage model to measure uh, different aspects of the uh, half wave and full wave rectified uh, s signal. And um, we'll do we'll do that with the behavioral voltage model and then two diodes, and that will be the, the third video. So let's let's just jump into this video and um, want to just talk a little bit about the circuit. And if we look at the circuit, we notice that we're going to have two inductors, L primary and L on the secondary side, and the ratio for a step down between the windings from the primary to the secondary has to be greater than one for step down. And then the other thing to note is the value of the inductance is related to the uh, by the square to the windings ratio. Um, that's a you have to go back to your circuits course on that one. And we're going to use that to, to size the inductor. So now let's switch over to, to our spice. And here we have a pre-built spice circuit. And you can see it. Um, if you want to pause the video to just build this circuit up, go ahead and pause the, pause the video, build it up, um, uh, and get comfortable with that. And then come back, and I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, then uh, utilize the circuit. So assuming you now have this circuit built in, in LT Spice, uh, what 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 I want to do is put a spice directive in here, and the spice directive is dot p a r a m a, and I'm going to say l p is equal to one. Milla, uh, one millihenry. And then we're going to say LS is equal to LP divided by the quantity. And I'm going to use a step down ratio of seven. Seven squared. Again, the ratio between the inductance values goes by the square of the windings ratio. So if I hit OK there, I should get a symbol and I, I click it up there. If you made mistakes, you can always double click in there and you'll see the box opens up and we can do either further parameterization there. Now once I have that, I go into my L1 and L2 and I have to change its value. It comes up, up generically with a value of L and we're going to use braces. So the syntax is brace and that's LP. 
Now, LP has been calculated through the Param, Param uh, Spice Directive. And I see I made a typo up there. Let me go fix this. Clean that typo up. And let me, so, so the braces LP is going to give the value to L1. And then L2, again, brace L secondary. And we'll get the value for L secondary. And L secondary is going to be the primary value of inductance divided by the turns ratio squared, which we're, I'm just going to pick for 7 right now. And then finally, the last thing I want to do, again, I'm going to grab the directive command, but I'm not going to put a dot in there. I'm just going to say K, L1, L2. K means mutual inductance, and it's going to be the mutual inductance between L1 and L2. And we're going to be perfectly coupled, so the value is going to be 1. And that then creates our transformer. Uh, I've got this set up to do a transient analysis between 0 and 1 second. And if I hit run, we show, oh, i got to put a value in for R. Uh, I believe we, we calculated in our initial design our load was 10 ohms, and that gave us the 40-watt output uh, for our power supply. So we got to set that to 10 ohms just, just for this. And you say I've got it set to 169, the peak value, 60 hertz, and let's run. And I got an error, and I knew I was going to get an error, and I wanted to show you this error. Now, uh, if you read the error, it says voltage source V line and inductor are paralleled, making an overdefined circuit matrix. And uh, SPICE uses numerical methods to solve for the output. And it really actually does it in the time domain. So I have to add some series resistance in there. And, it, and that's actually good modeling as well. So I'm going to grab a resistor. I have hotkey set up to do uh, my rotation of control R. And I'm going to put the resistor in there. And I'm going to give it a value of about um, 200 milliohms, which is, which is pretty close to what the winding might be on this transformer. And if I do that uh, and run the program, run the simulation and we get the results and let me go and just probe the result up here and sure enough there is our voltage uh, let me zoom in on the voltage and you see we have about 21 as 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 our peak that might not be enough uh, to account for diode drops and so one of the things we might want to do is change our our turns ratio and, and and allow for a larger one so i can easily do that once i have this parametized by changing that seven to a six not 76 but six and we can run it again and sure enough with with that turns ratio we have now we're up to 24 and that might be uh, sufficient and usually with designs of unregulated supplies like this, they're part of the front end of a system where we're going to have regulation downstream. And if I'm going to make an error, I want to err on the side of a higher voltage as compared to a lower voltage. So oftentimes with the transformers, we don't necessarily get to pick what the turns ratio is going to be. We, we, we're going to be given a turns ratio, and we'll figure out and fine-tune the output voltage uh, with a regulated uh, converter downstream. So that wraps up uh, video one. In video two, as I said, we're going to create the diode bridge that would be attached to this, this transformer. And a um, couple of things we learned in here, again, the dot PA, uh, RAM parameterization, so we can start creating uh, ways to help uh, ease our, or, or, may, or simplify our design, or help us analyze our design in a, in a faster way. Um, we, can, we can even write these dot parama uh, uh, spice directives in, in a spreadsheet and calculate some of that as well. Um, and then finally, the ability to create um, an ideal transform using uh, mutually coupled inductors. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in part two.